So in this video, we're going over LASIK eye surgery. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So hey everybody, welcome. I am Dr. Joseph Allen, and I'm here on Dr. Eye Health, the channel that helps you with the eyes, vision, and finding the best vision products. So if this is the first time we're meeting and you're into that sort of stuff, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, really, this is just my passion. I'm an eye doctor who lives, eats, and breathes my profession, and it's really just my goal to help as many people as I can, not just see their best today, but also for tomorrow. So hey, again, uh, we're covering LASIK today. We're going to be going over a lot of different questions. This is one of the most popular types of surgeries, elective procedures on the planet and has been one of the most popular procedures in eye care for the last 20 years. And this is all across the globe. So we're going to be covering a lot of different stuff about LASIK, answering some good questions for you, anything that you may have. Uh, of course, if you're catching this either live or on the replay, uh, I got a lot of good questions for you guys, and I want to share some stuff with you. So uh, first thing that we're going to go over here, let me kind of bump on over to a slide here to share with you guys. So first, I'm going to kind of show you here. Uh, this is my Instagram and Twitter handle. If you guys want to go ahead and catch me on there, you can catch some other good information about eye care. Uh, go, ahead and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, let's go ahead and see what else. So the good question for you here today, if you're, if you're interested in LASIK, uh, you know, the chances are you're probably watching this because you have some interest in LASIK. You're thinking about it. You're kind of sick and tired of wearing glasses and contacts. And I totally get that. And so a good question for you guys is, do you wear glasses? Do you wear contacts? And for how long? You know, is it something that you first got when you were a kid? I know when I first got glasses, I was in second grade. I was like seven or eight years old, got glasses, and it, it, it just completely changed my life. Of course, my grades in school got better, started doing better just in general uh, across the board in sports and things like that. But then finally got contact lenses when I was 13, and that changed my life. And I've been a mainly, uh, mainly a contact lens wearer, but I wear glasses occasionally still uh, all the way up to today. And certainly LASIK is something that I even personally am tempted by. And almost all of my best friends have had LASIK in the last couple of years. And uh, I'm really excited just to kind of talk more about this. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, just a, a quick kind of a quote that I found that really kind of hits home for me when it terms comes to LASIK. And that is some, by Ella Henderson was create a vision that makes you want to jump out of the bed in the morning. And that sounds kind of more motivational. But the truth is that this is something that I hear pretty frequently uh, in the clinic. And this is something that, you know, patients come in, whether it's one week after having LASIK surgery or a month after having LASIK surgery or even a year or multiple years after having LASIK. And the number one thing most people say, and I say, hey, how's it going? Like, what's your first experience? How's the vision? And they're like, you know, the best thing so far is waking up in the morning, getting out of bed and not having to reach for my glasses, not having to stumble my way to the bathroom to put in my contacts. That's, that's how amazing LASIK can be for people. It really opens up and frees them the ability to not have to rely so heavily on glasses and contacts to get throughout their day. So I think as an eye care professional, it's one of the things I love, absolutely love about LASIK is that I get to help people really open up their entire lives. Every experience throughout their day is enhanced because of their good vision. So I uh, just want to kind of say again, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Joseph Allen. We're going to be talking about LASIK eye surgery, going a little bit more in depth. Uh, again, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So some of the pros and cons. Uh, I see, I uh, just want to shout out to Ariana and Guy. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here in the chat. Uh, again, if, you, uh, if you're just thinking about LASIK, you know, this is going to be a good kind of just review of some of the benefits uh, we're going to go over some of the things that you may want to consider if you're just learning about this topic, uh, as well as some of the other kind of hot things going on right now in the world with LASIK. So the let's actually go into what is LASIK eye surgery, okay? So LASIK actually stands for Laser Assisted In Situ Keratomalesis. Again, that stands for Laser Assisted, meaning we're using a laser, in situ keratomalesis. Now, keratomalesis actually stands for sculpting. It's basically the Latin derivative for the word for sculpting. And keratomalesis at the beginning of keratomalesis is describing the keratocytes, 
within the stroma. That's actually the middle layer of the cornea. And I have kind of a model eye that I have over here to the side. And if you ever watch some of my videos, maybe you'll see me hold up this model eye. And this is something a lot of us have. Actually, when you finish school, uh, a company actually gives this to almost every single student. So the surface of the eye, the front surface here, that's the cornea. In the middle layer, this layer gets sculpted by the laser. And that basically helps reshape the surface of the eye, which focuses light to the retina in the back, and that's what lets you see. That's what LASIK is, and it's actually pretty simple. Uh, and it's just, it's amazing. So that's that's basically kind of what that's basically what LASIK is. Now, laser-wise, we use an excimer laser. That's a special laser that was actually developed originally for microchips. It was actually meant to little etch little microchips uh, into basically all the the little, you know, if you ever looked at a microchip, you'll see the little bent lines and things like that. That's that's what it originally was made for. But then somebody was gutsy and thought, hey, let me see if this works on my skin. And uh, well, yeah, it vaporizes human tissue. So that's that's how that laser works. Now, in in the olden days and still today, uh, but originally LASIK was used, uh, was performed using what's called a microkeratome, which is basically a razor blade. They would very, very accurately, with the sharpest razor blade you can imagine, would slice part of the eye, and that would open up part of the cornea and create a flap. Now, I kind of, I don't really have too much a good, um, I would say, kind of props for you guys, but I actually grabbed a lemon out of the kitchen, and I cut it just at the top. So if you can think of this as the front part of the eye, your cornea, this is the part where you're looking through, right in the front, and then if you were to cut it, it would actually hinge open. So that's the part of the surgery where they actually hinge it open. And then the laser zaps away on part of the eye, and then they put the hinge back, and then the flap actually heals. It heals really well and really fast. Uh, and so that's the basic procedure of, of LASIK. Now today, a lot of times you maybe even hear something called bladeless LASIK, and that's actually where we don't use the razor blade or the, uh, the microkeratome. Instead, we use what's called a femtosecond laser. Uh, now, femtosecond laser is a newer development in all the laser classifications, but it's basically it creates little micro pockets of gaseous. It basically vaporizes the tissue, but creates these little pockets that separate the layers of the tissue and lets you easily peel it back. Uh, and there's some great advantages with the bladeless LASIK. So that's something that a lot of surgeons will talk to you about if you ever go in for a LASIK evaluation. Uh, they'll talk about the benefits of either doing, you know, maybe perhaps using the bladed LASIK, using the microkeratome, or perhaps using the femtosecond LASIK if it's more in your favor. So let's talk a little bit more just about some of the pros, some of the good aspects of LASIK. So number one is, of course, the freedom not necessarily freedom, but the less dependency on glasses and contacts. That is huge. That's a huge factor for a lot of people is just having a decreased amount of dependency on glasses. And I say less dependency because there is kind of that kind of an expectation that needs to be set that it's not complete freedom from glasses and contacts for the rest of your life. Uh, a lot of people kind of have that idea that, oh, I'll get LASIK and I'll never need glasses ever, ever, ever again. And that's just not a real realistic expectation. And that's something, again, we'll kind of go over uh, over a little bit more here as time goes on uh, throughout, the, throughout the video. But now a big part about LASIK is just that it's it's very quick. It's painless. So these, again, some amazing benefits. So you can have LASIK and it's done almost instantly. Uh, again, it's with a laser, so it goes, it's as fast as light, and it literally helps carve the surface of the eye. The procedure itself takes roughly 10 minutes per eye, so it goes by pretty fast. And I'll tell you something kind of funny, is that uh, a lot of LASIK procedures that you see throughout the country, and I, I've, I've visited a couple of them, and they all kind of do the same procedure. They'll have you sit at the end of the bed, uh, at the end of the operating table. No glasses, no contacts. You're all prepped and ready to have the procedure. You're looking across the room and there'll be a clock. There'll be a clock on the wall and they ask you, hey, what time is it? And you'll be like, I can't see it. <laughs> you know, 99% of people are not going to be able to see the clock. And then the procedure, you lay down. The procedure is all done after 10, 20 minutes, getting both eyes done. You sit up and they're like, oh, tell me what time is it? Oh, it's 3.15. All of a sudden, that quick, you can read the clock. That is amazing. Um, now, of course, 
results vary a little bit, but in majority, after with 18, about 12, 18 hours later, people are usually seeing almost just as good as they did with the glasses and contacts. For an elective procedure to have, be that accurate and have that good a success, that is just astronomical. And so that is why LASIK, again, is the most popular procedure in the United States as an elective procedure, again, over, um, I think over the last 20 years. So really excellent. So uh, just kind of calling out here in the chat. Yes, uh, there's a couple of things we'll get to more. I want to call out Ariana, who said her friend uh, actually got LASIK and told me that she, they noticed a really gross smell during the procedure. And that's true. So in the procedure, uh, I think probably the number one thing you'll notice is that beyond just your vision going blurry while they prep the eye, and it, once they fold the flap back, you, you can't see. Everything is kind of just like kaleidoscope colors. Uh, you can smell uh, a scent in the air, and it's not that pleasant. But it kind of smells like human hair. It smells like burnt hair. Uh, and that's because the, the tissue of your cornea is literally being vaporized. And so when that goes into the air, you smell it, and it smells kind of like burnt hair. Now, again, let's go over a little bit more of some of the really good things about LASIK. So not only is it fast, but it's incredibly safe. So in fact, the success rate for LASIK right now, the most recent reported rates, is a 99% success rate in improving vision and a 96% satisfaction rate. So a 99% success rate, a 96% satisfaction rate, and really that leaves a less than 1% complication rate. And these are all uh, statistics that are published by both the American Academy of Ophthalmology, as well as some reports about a year or two years ago by the Food and Drug Administration. Now, in general, there's about over a million different cases of LASIK performed almost every year, except the more recent kind of evaluations show that that number is declining a little bit. I think it's closer to 600,000. Uh, now, it's not necessarily because LASIK has any problems with it. It's because there's other procedures, new technology that is coming out. Now, a uh, couple other things beyond just the safety, the, how fast the procedure is. But one of the things that I love about LASIK is that so many people are good candidates for this procedure. And that's kind of the next thing is kind of like what, what makes you a good candidate for this procedure? And it's because this procedure actually works for a very large range of prescriptions. So I know a lot of people I have new patients come in. They'll be like, oh, I'd love to get LASIK, but, you know, I've got astigmatism. I can't get LASIK. Mm, that's not true. That is probably one of the biggest myths about LASIK that uh, I hear, you know, every single week is that they have astigmatism, you can't get LASIK. That's, that's not true. Now, there are ranges, and let's go over some of those ranges. How about we do that? Let's look at some ranges from prescriptions. So, hyperopia means farsightedness. Now, and basically, if you have a prescription, now, technically, if you read the literature, it'll, they can calve and can do LASIK onto plus six diopters of farsightedness, hyperopia. Or if you're nearsightedness, they have also technically gone all the way up to minus 15. Now that's pretty extreme. Now, really, most surgeons will kind of stop considering the true, no, the, the, the actual surgery of LASIK at around minus 10. Some doctors, if, if they're able to, uh, they feel it's safe, they can go a little higher. But usually somewhere between minus 9, minus 10 is kind of the extent. Now, astigmatism, like I was saying, is actually a myth. You can get astigmatism, you can have surgery, you can have LASIK eye surgery still if you have astigmatism, but up to about a minus four. Again, they have done more than that, but in the safety ranges and to guarantee that you're, well, not guarantee, they can't say guarantee, but they're going to, you know, really give you the best vision without putting you at risk for any other complications, they kind of limited it around minus four. So that's amazing. Like that's a huge range. That's a lot of people that come into the clinic that actually could potentially get LASIK. Now, one of the big things is, you know, is your prescription stable? So a lot of people come in and they're thinking, oh, geez, my prescription changes every single year. Well, yeah, that may be true. Yeah, some people's prescriptions still change every year, maybe a little bit, maybe I'll buy a lot. But in general, if you are within plus or minus a half diopter 
of change in your prescription, you actually are considered fairly stable. Now, there's a few other things. If you go in for a LASIK evaluation, if you're thinking about it and you know a doctor in the area that you know, you know, you trust them, your doctor recommends them, you've been referred to them, they're going to mention, hey, do you wear contacts? Because if you wear contacts, you're going to have to take, out of the, take those contacts out and stay out of those contacts for at least a couple of weeks. So if you're a soft contact lens wearer, at least, at very least a week, and most surgeons actually recommend at least two weeks of remaining out of soft contact lenses before you have the evaluation. Then if you're a hard lens wearer, so if a rigid gas permeable layer, an RGP lens wearer, you have to stay out of the lens for almost a full month. Because a lot of people don't know this, but contact lenses actually change the curvature to your eye a little bit they can actually influence the curvature to your eye. And so when we're considering LASIK and we have to take all these measurements to make sure it's as precise as it possibly can be to give you the best vision possible, they have to basically make sure that the surface of the eye is its normal shape. And so that's why you have to remain out of the contacts and let things kind of go back to the way they once were. So these are all just amazing reasons to have LASIK. One other kind of thing, as we kind of kind of transition a little bit more from just the good things about LASIK, let's go a little bit over cost. Because I think cost it can be both a good and a bad thing for LASIK, depending on kind of your financial situation. Now, here in the United States, uh, what what are, people in the chat right now, uh, you know, we got Crystal, I see Lulu, Jeremiah, Shannon. Uh, thank you guys all for joining me here. Uh, again, if, if you're new to the if you're new to the video, if you're new to the channel, again, I'm Dr. Joseph Allen. Uh, I'm really just part of the Dr. Eye Health uh, Dr. Eye Health channel is to help people learn about eyes, vision, and vision products. So again, we're talking about LASIK, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now we're right on that edge where we're going to talk about going into bad. But if you are thinking about LASIK, maybe you already know, maybe you already done your research. What do you think the price of LASIK is per eye? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. So let's see. Anybody have any ideas? So let's go and actually I'll, I'll get I'll give you to tell you guys here. In average here in the United States, its cost of LASIK is about fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars per eye. Uh, and that can be a little steep for some people. Now, the reality is, cost of LASIK can vary. It varies all across the country based on the surgeon, based on the location, the surgery center. Uh, usually, the price, if you if you actually do your research and you find, try to find the best surgeon in your area, the one that has the most pr repeated procedures, the ones that have really the most referrals, that have the best success stories. And you can look at, you know, like Google reviews, there'll be maybe 4.9, maybe 5.0, all five stars. Uh, and you always want to take those with a grain of salt, but, you know, even go by word of mouth of who's good. And usually the, the surgeons that uh, I have the most respect for, they have, their prices are usually somewhere between, between those numbers, around $1,500, $1,700 an eye. And that varies a little bit based on the type of procedure you need and how complicated your, your case is. So if you have a, if you have like a high amount of astigmatism or you have a very thin cornea or it's just that you're at higher risk and you need, the doctor basically will say, you can't have the microkeratome, the bladed part of the LASIK. You need the femtosecond laser. Uh, that's the only one that will make LASIK possible for you. And so that that's a newer technology. The that that laser itself is like a half a million dollars to purchase for that clinic. So it does make the procedure more expensive. But I, I encourage you, anybody who's out there, if you're strongly considering LASIK, like have you done your research? Have you looked up doctors in your area? Have you looked up their prices? Uh, have you maybe talked to other eye doctors and ask, you know, who 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 does well? Like, you know, who do you trust? Because I think the biggest thing with all surgeons is that you just want somebody who does their work, does their homework to make sure it's a good procedure for you. Uh, because sometimes LASIK is not the best option for refractive surgery for everybody. There are other procedures. An older procedure, but still equally as good result in terms of visual acuity would be one called PRK, uh, photorefractive keratectomy. And that one is basically LASIK without creating the flap. And it has a lot of advantages. Uh, it just the 
and there's advantages and disadvantages to each. And that's something that every LASIK center, every surgeon should discuss with you. And I think it's something that I, you know, everybody watching this video, you're already doing your homework. You're watching this video. You're getting some extra information about this procedure. And I think that's amazing. I think you guys are being good advocates for your own eyes, your own health. And I think it's amazing. Now, now that we've kind of covered some of the great benefits of kind of of LASIK, of how great it is, you get freedom from glasses, you know, you, you can actually, you know, it's not the worst, most expensive thing. Now, the one other thing I did want to kind of comment on is an extra tool for you, an extra tool for you if you are really considering LASIK and you're not quite sure if you can make it work, consider this. Because of getting LASIK and let's say you get that freedom, that less dependency on glasses and contacts, think about how much money you spend every year on buying a new pair of glasses, buying contact lenses if you're a contact lens wearer, and if you're a contact lens wearer, if you're a monthly or a two-week lens wearer, how much solution do you buy? Uh, if you actually calculate that all up, it actually gets rather a little bit more expensive. But there is a tool that I would encourage you guys to use. Now, uh, this is, a, I'm going to show you over here, I'm going to show you this slide. Now, this is an actual tool that I'll hook up in the description in the below in the video. If you check out the description below, there will be a link to... Uh, to a website that is actually from the Association of Refractive Refractive Surgeon Society, and they actually have a calculator where you can put in the cost of your contact lenses, your average prescription uh, cost of glasses prescription, your how much solution you buy, cost of eye exam. Now, in here, I just took a screenshot of me calculating it out, but for me, when I was 22 years old, cost of one box of my contacts was fifty dollars, four boxes a year. It's about 20 bucks or $200 of US dollars. Cost of a glasses, I have a higher prescription, so it was about $400. Cost of just getting one bottle of contact lenses, maybe $15 times 12 months, because it's about a month for every bottle. And then, you know, I didn't count cost of my exam because what, my parents were either paying for it or I had insurance. Uh, and I never really bought prescription sunglasses because I was always wearing contacts. So, for me, at that time, it's like it comes out that I'm going to spend $27,300 US dollars on glasses and contacts by the time I'm 50. And then, you know, that, that's, that's a huge amount. So what's really cool is that, again, you can use that calculator. You can plug in those numbers, and it just puts things in perspective, puts into how much money you can actually save and how when does LASIK pay for itself. And on average, a lot of people will pay, LASIK will end up paying for itself with almost like three to five years. That's that's pretty incredible. Now, the reality is that that depends, of course, on how often you see your eye doctor, how often you get your glasses prescription updated, how often you get contacts, what type of contacts you're getting, how fancy your glasses you're getting. It, it goes into a lot of different things. Now, there again, that's, that's just kind of price. And I think that's, again, another thing to consider. Now, in terms of, let's go a little bit more into the bad portions of LASIK. And it's not necessarily bad, but more of kind of things to consider, some cons to getting LASIK, because there's a reality that this is a procedure and there's not necessarily complications, but side effects from LASIK. So let's go a little bit more into that. Now, when we're talking about kind of side effects, let me ask you a question, guys. So if you're either in the chat right now, or maybe you're watching this on the replay, if you could have LASIK, if you could have an elective procedure to have less dependency on glasses and contacts, but we said that it's not going to be, you're not going to be without glasses and contacts forever, that you would still at some point in your life, you're probably going to still need glasses. You're going to have to need reading glasses. You might need to go back to contacts. Uh, if we told you that, yes, you could get LASIK, you're a good candidate, but you have to know that you're going to eventually get need glasses again, would you have LASIK? Is that in your expectations, that you will eventually need glasses again? Because if so, if your answer is yes, then, then, yeah, actually, you might be a very good candidate for LASIK. The people who expect that, you know, I'm going to get LASIK, and I am never going to need glasses again. I'm never going to need glasses or contacts, and I'm going to see better than 2020 the rest of my life. The people who have those expectations are not going to be happy, and they're not a good candidate for LASIK. And most surgery centers will 
go over extensively and they will make sure you know what you're going through. They'll have you sign 30 times on pieces of paper. The surgeon will go over all, all of basically the contra contraindications and what's a normal expected, uh, kind of what you should expect from LASIK because they want you to be happy. They want you to have a good success. They want you to go out and tell your friends. And that's how it is with most of my patients. Almost all of my patients will come in and I, I honestly have almost never had a person say, oh, that they regretted getting LASIK. In fact, a lot of people, my, some of my best friends, say it's one of the best decisions that they've ever made. That's, that's really powerful. Now, again, there's a couple other things. Again, we're going to go into kind of the bad aspects, but they're more of just the cons. Uh, and one of them kind of is that, that thought that, yes, you will need glasses at some point. And that's not that the glasses wear off. That's probably the biggest myth about LASIK is that the, that the LASIK wears off. And it doesn't. The reality is that once you have LASIK, it is done. Your tissue from your eye has been vaporized. It is gone. It is not coming back. But the eye continues to grow and change along with the rest of your body. So part of the eye is called the crystalline lens. The crystalline lens inside the eye actually grows every year of life, kind of like the rings on a tree. It actually gets thicker every single year of life. So when you're a kid, it's very thin. It's very thin because it's thin, it's flexible. I like to think about the little sapling tree outside that I planted last year. When the wind blows really hard, it, 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 it goes back and forth in the wind. But as that sapling grows and gets bigger, as the same thing, the crystal lens inside the eye grows and gets bigger, it gets thicker, it adds more rings, it becomes rigid. And then all of a sudden you have a hundred year old oak tree and wind does not blow that thing over unless you're in a hurricane, then maybe. But in general, it's not going to cause that tree to kind of sway back and forth too hard, at least not the trunk. And so that's the same idea as the crystal lens inside the eye. It's so hard, it gets so rigid that it doesn't flex anymore. And that occurs almost for everybody in their mid-40s. It starts off in kind of their mid-40s, or for some people, late 30s, but mostly mid-40s. And by the time you're in your 50s, you have what's called presbyopia. Presbyopia is basically older eyes, and that that lens inside the eye is so thick now and rigid that the eye muscles, even though they're flexing, can't stretch they can't stretch that lens anymore. And so that lens can't focus and you can't see up close. And that's why everybody, at some point, once you're into your mid 40s and 50s, you, most people need some type of reading glasses. Now you may go through presbyopia and not need reading glasses just because you got lucky, one eye's more focused for distance, one eye's for near, both eyes just work together and you're doing well, that's awesome. There's some people who are like that, but you still have presbyopia because the lens is getting thick and rigid. And so it's not that LASIK wears off. It's just that you're going through a normal aging change of your eye. Your ocular health changes that way, just like you get gray hair as we get older. Uh, and so that that is a reality. And some people really don't like it, but there are some great advantages. So uh, there are some great advantages to LASIK in that you can not only just have LASIK to see good in the distance, but you can have what's called monovision. And monovision is where we set one eye for distance so you can see really good in the distance, but then you can also have monovision, monovision, the other eye, set for up close for your reading prescription. Now, statistically, about 80% of people can make that adjustment in their brain, but they lose depth perception. So it's not for everybody, but if it's something, if you're over the age of 45 and you're maybe you're just approaching the age of 40, maybe you're 39 or something, I think most surgeons nowadays at least discuss having monovision. That's something maybe you even should bring up. If you're into that, if you're in that age group and if you're approaching 40, consider consider having a monovision trial of contact lenses. That way you can actually see what distance and near actually kind of looks like. Now beyond just presbyopia, uh, we actually the, the number one cause of all or I shouldn't say number one cause, but the number one side effect, the number one side effect that's most frequently experienced from from after after LASIK surgery is dry eyes. So how many people here, how many people either in the chat or uh, if you're just catching us on the replay again, go ahead and comment in the section below, 
how many of you have dry eyes? Now, dry eyes, again, is is very common, especially nowadays for many different reasons, whether it's because you're on the computer all day and your blink rate's going down. Maybe you have hormone changes as you're getting older. Sorry, ladies, as you go through menopause, dry eyes gets a little bit worse because of hormones. Uh, if you have thyroid eye disease, more likely to have more dryness. Uh, irregularities to the tear film occur during pregnancy. Again, sorry, ladies. Uh, Mybomian gland disease, uh, that, that's the oil glands in your eyelids. That contributes a lot to dry eye disease. So uh, you know, those are all really, those are, dry eyes is a major thing that affects us globally, humans in general. And as we get, as we live older, it's becoming more and more of an issue. Uh, now, with comes to dry eyes, dry eyes, again, is the number one complication, or I shouldn't say complication, but side effect of LASIK eye surgery. So if we go over to dry eyes, this is, this picture here is actually what the surface of the eye looks like in a severe form of dry eye. And you can see all those little yellow, kind of green yellow specks. That is basically the surface of the eye so dry that it looks like sandpaper. It is not smooth anymore. The surface of the eye should be like glass. And 60 to 60 to 70 percent, these are again statistics quoted by the American Academy of Ophthalmology, that 60 to 70 percent of people who have LASIK experience some form of dry eye. And that is because of corneal denervation, mostly. It's dry eyes is a multifactorial disease, right? There's a lot of things going on. But in LASIK specifically, the procedure where they actually open the flap of the front surface of the eye, it severs the corneal nerves. And the corneal nerves, they lose sensitization, uh, they become denervated, and they actually can grow back kind of strange. They don't grow back perfectly normal. And so the connection between the eye and the brain to say, hey, make more tears, is broken off. And so a lot of people end up with really bad dry eyes afterward. Now, that being said, dry eyes can be treated. There's many different strategies for dry eyes, whether that's medications like Zydra, Restasis, you can do punctal plugs, there's in-office treatments like Lipaflow, uh, there's of course artificial tears, different eye drops. Uh, you can try the more homeopathic ways. I always talk about, you know, make sure you're drinking plenty of water. I love doing warm compresses myself. I think those help a lot. And if you haven't, if you have other kind of thoughts or ideas about dry eyes, if you're having a lot of dry eyes, need some more help, and you haven't seen my other videos on that, I'll hook up an additional kind of YouTube card up above here uh, about linking to my whole kind of series on dry eyes. It's something that I'm building right now, and hopefully we'll have many more videos coming out in the future. Now, again, that's just the, the number one kind of side effect of LASIK. But the good news is that most people, this dryness, using artificial tears frequently over the healing period, so for the first three months, that dry eyes improves. And if you continue, you may still have dry eye issues. However, a lot of people will come back a year later, two years, and they'll be like, no, I don't have any problems with dryness. And so I can't guarantee that it'll be anyone else's experience, but there, it, it, dryness is probably the number one biggest concern that we're always watching for. Uh, now, I just want to give another call, quick shout out to some of the people in the chat. I see, again, Anna and Lulu. Um, so sorry to hear that you guys have some dryness and everything like that. Um, I know it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing to battle. I, I fight it myself. Now, beyond just dryness, there's a couple other things. We're just going to kind of touch on them. We're not going to be as, you know, I could be here for like two days if we we're going to cover everything about LASIK. But the other two things I want to mention was contrast sensitivity, which is the difficulty seeing in dim light. So people driving at nighttime after having LASIK, usually a little bit more difficult for the first three months. But that generally improves as the corneal, cornea heals. Same thing with halos and glare. So for anybody out there who has astigmatism, if you have astigmatism, go ahead and comment. Let me know if you have astigmatism or uh, you can go ahead and comment in the section below as well if you're catching on the replay. Uh, astigmatism, if you're walking around and you have bad astigmatism, or maybe you're not wearing your glasses or your contacts on correcting for astigmatism, if you look at a light, it looks like a starburst, right? If you're, if you, maybe you're driving, looking at headlights, it comes off as this huge glaring starburst coming out at you. And that can be from astigmatism, but 
you can have that if some people don't have those experiences at all, but then you have LASIK and some people do experience that sort of glare starburst feeling. And halos and glare actually reported around 7%. Again, this is another uh, percentage reported by the American Academy of Ophthalmology. So halos and glare around 7% for people who've never experienced it before, experience it after LASIK. However, again, it usually does resolve within the first three to six months post-surgery. Now, a couple other things that we keep in mind uh, for anybody out there who's had herpes simplex. Uh, now, herpes simplex, whenever, as a doctor in the clinic, I try never to use the word herpes. I say viral infection because there's kind of a bad uh, understanding about the word herpes. And I'm not talking about necessarily the STD, but the herpes virus that causes cold sores. The herpes virus can actually affect the eye. And it, it, it actually, during LASIK, if you've had a history of that type of virus, LASIK can reactivate it. It's not as, uh, not as common, especially with more modern, um, modern procedures, femtosecond lasers. But that, that is something that we have to consider. Uh, the diabetes. So diabetes, you don't heal as well. So that is a contraindication. People, because of the denervation of the corneal nerves, people who have really advanced diabetes can ultimately have neurotrophic keratitis. So again, it's another thing that's considered, but a lot of the more recent research say a lot of people, if they're well-controlled, if you're a diabetic who's well-controlled, you can still have very successful LASIK. Thyroid eye disease, again, that has to go with more dry eye. Uh, autoimmune diseases, so like collagen vascular diseases, uh, that's another thing that we, we have to consider and we screen for. And some, again, some research says it's okay. Some procedures, people have had success doing it on people with collagen vascular disease. But uh, I think most surgeons would say, you know what, it's probably not the best option for you. The pregnancy, if you're a lady out there and you're thinking about LASIK, pregnancy in general, we wait six months before. It has to be in between six, before six, uh, like six months before or six months after uh, having uh, having a child, you, it has to do with hormones and changes to the curvature to the cornea. The, cor the curvature of the cornea can change. You can have transient changes to your prescription, so your prescription may vary, as well as irregularities in the tear film can all occur due to hormone changes uh, due to pregnancy. So it is in your best interest to wait <laughs> until you're either done with having children or you're kind of in between. And then you could certainly consider LASIK. Glaucoma. Now, glaucoma is something that uh, if you're maybe maybe glaucoma runs in your family. I, I personally have glaucoma in my family, and so LASIK can affect glaucoma in a couple of ways. One is that during the LASIK procedure, especially if you're using the more modern femtosecond laser procedure or even the microkeratome, reality is that there's a lot of pressure that gets put on the eye during that initial part of LASIK. The pressure is to make sure that the instrument suctions in the correct place so that there isn't a mistake that's made, that there's no other complications during the procedure itself. That increased pressure of the eye can jack the pressure up almost above 60 millimeters of mercury. And if you're not in the eye care world, that's a lot. Uh, normal pressure is between 10 and 20. If it's just for a short period, going up to 60 and then back down is fine. It's not gonna really hurt anything. But if you have glaucoma, then that increased pressure may cause damage to the nerve in the back of the eye and you could you know, theoretically lose some vision from it. So that's one reason why if you currently have glaucoma, they don't wanna do that procedure. If you are maybe at risk, you have some glaucoma in your family, still could consider having LASIK. Uh, however, because LASIK cuts the surface of the eye and makes it thinner, it, eva it we completely destroy some of the surface of the eye and that makes the cornea thinner. That makes it more difficult for us to measure the eye pressure. And so it's not an absolute contraindication, but it's something that uh, is considered when you're considering glaucoma or it's considering LASIK and you have glaucoma or glaucoma in your family. Another thing that I kind of wanted to mention is uh, for anybody else who's getting out there older, I saw a question earlier in the chat about cataracts. And so as you get older, beyond just having presbyopia and needing reading glasses, things like that, you can eventually develop cataracts as you continue to get older and older. Uh, and cataracts is that same crystalline lens, but it turns cloudy and you can't see through it. So getting cataract surgery. Now, what's great is that technology is always advancing. I absolutely love that technology is advancing. There's always new things coming out, new, new procedures, new instruments, and we're getting better and better. But... Still, once you have cataract surgery, if you're thinking about, if, if you've already had LASIK and now you have to get cataract surgery, 
we have to do extra steps to try and make sure that we get your cataract surgery a a as perfect as it can. We want you to see good after cataract surgery, but after you've had LASIK, a lot of the measurements that we take for cataract surgery is kind of thrown off a little bit. And so it can make things more challenging. Now, again, that's not really a huge kind of worry, even for myself, if I'm going to consider having LASIK, because I, I personally have not had LASIK. Uh, I still wear a lot of glasses and contacts. Now, it's personally not a real huge concern for me, but it's something to consider. But I know if you're maybe in your 20s, maybe in your 30s, and thinking about LASIK, and you're not really thinking about cataracts in the future, eventually, if you live long enough, you may need cataract surgery. But who knows where... Who knows where technology is going to be then in another 20, 30 years. Uh, we may have a completely new procedure for cataracts. Maybe we'll have eye drops to dissolve cataracts at that point. Currently, we don't have that. Uh, but it's something that I know is in the works with some pharmaceutical companies that are trying to work on that. Now, those are kind of, that kind of, that kind of revolt, that, I think that kind of closes out the biggest concerns or the cons, the bad parts about LASIK. You got the dryness. You got the glares, the halos. You're gonna have, you know, things you have to consider. You know, have you had, or are you either have really bad dry eyes? Do you have diabetes? You know, are you are you thinking about having kids if you're pregnant, if you're a lady, or if you maybe have glaucoma or some other disease in your family? Uh, another kind of thing to mention was, can you have LASIK surgery once or multiple times? Actually, it kind of depends. Now, LASIK can have. You can have LASIK once and then you are set. You don't ever need it again. But there are times when people need either touch-ups because if something didn't go quite 100% right in the procedure itself, so you need kind of a touch-up. And some people can do that and that, that's great. It's a great option. One of my good friends, his wife, Deanna, she had LASIK surgery and one eye was perfect, like 20-20. The other eye was a little bit fuzzy. Didn't I, I wasn't there. I wasn't part of her care, so I don't know exactly what happened but it didn't turn out perfect. She was like maybe 2030 instead of 2020, which is still very good. But they have to wait three months, they let the cornea heal, and then after three months they reassess and they say, okay, how can we fix this? And so they went ahead and did a second procedure on that eye, and she had enough tissue on her eye. So that's something that we didn't quite fully mention that goes a little bit deeper into LASIK is that there has to be enough tissue on the eye to remove safely. There is a general agreement between 250 and 300 microns of corneal tissue has to remain uh, before you put someone at risk of what's called ectasia. And that's basically where the surface of the eye loses its integrity and starts to warp. Uh, and no surgeon wants to cause, you know, do no harm. No surgeon wants to do that to their patient. So if there's enough tissue to remove, to ablate, to get good vision, then you could potentially have LASIK a second time. But if it hits that point where you are going to break that threshold of 200, 300 microns, and that's that's a debated topic in uh, laser, vision, laser vision correction, is how much tissue is safe. Uh, but in general, 250 to 300 microns. Now, uh, there's a lot of other things to consider in terms of like occupation for LASIK, things like that. We have, if you're in the military, sometimes LASIK isn't the best option for you because if you're someone who's, maybe you're a boxer, uh, if you get poked in the eye after you've had LASIK, you have this kind of hinged flap there. It's there, it's pretty tough. But if you get poked in the eye really hard with someone's finger, if uh, you get punched in the eye or something happens, the flap that was on the eye can dislocate. It can move and we have to usually get you back into the OR and get it positioned back as soon as possible. But that's one of the main reasons why a lot of times in military, um, you know, I guess I don't know fully if, if pilots are allowed to get LASIK or not. That's a, a good question. Um, you know, honestly, I don't, I think it depends what kind of pilot. If you're going to be a fighter pilot, they're probably not going to let you uh, be a fighter pilot to begin with if you have that bad eyes where you need to have uh, LASIK. Um, but if you're just like a general kind of pilot, if you're flying for like Delta Airlines or something like that, then, uh, you know, it's tough to say. Uh, that's a good question probably for your uh, Air Force, you know, your airport license, uh, your licensure. Something, a good thing to kind of go over. Now, the next part we're going to go, we're going to kind of transition from just kind of the bad contraindication, you know, kind of your side effects of having LASIK. Let's actually go over the ugly, okay? So this is actually something that, 
is a little bit more recent in the news. So maybe some of you guys have been listening to the news. Maybe you listen to uh, different headlines. I think actually Dr. Oz is doing a piece, um, whether or not you watch Dr. Oz, but you think he's doing a piece on this, is kind of this rise or the more attention that the media is getting toward uh, basically people who have committed suicide over LASIK. Now, when I say that, I think it's it's kind of it's not that LASIK directly caused someone to commit suicide. More recently in this last year, there was a meteorologist, a newscaster uh, here in the United States who had had a form of LASIK and she did not have the best outcome. Her expectations were not met. She had a lot of complications and the complications that she had weren't even you know, I don't want to belittle her experience, but she is from what I've read, because I was not involved in this case, but from what I've read of this, the report is that it was a lot of dryness. She had a lot of dryness in her vision. She was having trouble with her vision. She wasn't seeing as well as she expected. And it really affected her. It affected her ability to work. It affected her ability to enjoy life. And it kind of set her on this cascade of depression. So I actually kind of want to lead that into that it's it's not necessarily the LASIK that's causing these issues, but it's it's really the expectations. And I think that a big thing is mental health and support. So I kind of want to lead into that in that um, another part of this channel is also just to be a health support to provide some good education about being healthy and this goes for the eyes and the rest of the whole body including the mind so yeah mental health is a big thing to kind of mention especially in this sort of circumstance now again this is for anybody if you're considering lasik or if you have a friend who's had lasik and they're maybe having dryness issues uh reach out to your doctor your doctor's there to support you help treat you make sure you're healing well talk to your family if you're having any issues, and this isn't just for LASIK eye surgery, but any sort of mental health thing. I think there's always been kind of a bad stigma about mental health, but thank goodness it is changing. So I hope you can reach out to a counselor if you need help. Uh, if you have friends, family, talk to them too, okay? Uh, and if, certainly if you're having issues with your eyes, and not even from LASIK, just from dry eye, any sort of issues, talk to your local doctor. Uh, reach out to them for support. I think, you know, that, that's what they're there for. They want to help people. That's why I went into this profession. I think almost every doctor goes into any sort of medical field because they want to help people. That's that's really a core value. And that's even the, one of the core values of this channel here on Dr. Eye Health is really just to offer my knowledge and provide some support for people who have any sort of curious either vision issues. They're curious what's going on with their eyes. They're curious what kind of products or things are going to be the best for them. So uh, again, that's 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 a huge thing I just kind of want to mention. Now, uh, again, just kind of kind of go over that big thing that complications, big complications, like actual problems during the procedure, are are very rare. It's less than one percent. We're talking like infections, issues where the procedure went wrong and they had to stop and abort the whole procedure. That's less than one percent. Uh, so it's overall a very, very, very safe procedure. Uh, and so if you're, if you're kind of on the fence, you know, I totally get that, but, uh, how about a good question for everybody in the chat, or if you're catching this on the replay, what are your thoughts about LASIK? What is this, this kind of review that we've gone through so far? Has it either, are you, were you really considering LASIK? Or is it, did it help you think more about LASIK? Did it lean you more pro LASIK or did it kind of think, oh, you know, I have bad dry eyes. I have issues. Maybe LASIK isn't for me. Maybe it kind of swayed you the other way. Go ahead and comment in the section below. Give me a good kind of information about that. Uh, I'd love to kind of know. I'd kind of love to know your thoughts. So I have a few minutes here just for some questions. Uh, I got a couple of people I want to give a shout out to. Uh, I see Sam and Ryan. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here. Same thing with Shannon. Uh, does take does it take anesthesia? So LASIK, no. Uh, most most clinics, uh, most LASIK surgery centers will often offer you like Benadryl or some type of uh, something that'll just kind of ease your nerves because anxiety, it can be a big issue. Uh, I think anything coming close to the eye is for most people, I think every once in a while I'll have somebody in the clinic who I'm giving eye drops to or putting a contact lens on and they don't flinch. They don't flinch at all. I kind of think is something wrong. <laughs> like, you know, I kind of, kind of question like you, you should have a reflex to protect your eyes. It's in our kind of, in, in it's in our evolutionary 
real benefit to protect our eyes. In fact, usually, and this is published in all of the, this is published in all textbooks and journal articles about refractive surgery. Usually young men are more protective about their eyes than even women are. And there's different theories for that, that perhaps, uh, you know, women are more used to putting makeup on their eyes. They're used to being closer to their eyes so that they've kind of basically developed the ability to be better about things being close to them. But the reality is uh, that there's also the argument that men uh, kind of are, are you know, it kind of goes back to the hunter-gatherer debate, but they'll say that, you know, hunters, they, they, they were kind of raised to be hunters. They're always surveying their land. And if something goes wrong, they have to protect their eyes. Otherwise, they're not going to survive. So uh, a lot of men are generally, could say they're more squeamish, but they're more protective of their eyes. Uh, so thank you so much, Blue Green. Thank I'm so happy I was able to uh, help some support for you. Uh, uh, let's see, what else? Any other sort of questions you have about... Uh, kind of LASIK. Um, can you use preserved drops more than four times a day? So this is a great question, especially in terms of the dryness for things like LASIK. Uh, in general, it's, you know, in school they taught us anywhere four to six times a day. In general, though, preservatives in any type of eye drop being used more than four times a day can cause a toxic reaction to the surface of the eye. Uh, there is a type of the most frequently used preservative in all eye drop medication is something called BAK or benzalkonium chloride that is known to be very toxic to the surface of the eye. So using drops again more than four times a day, if it's a preserved drop, uh, you know, I, I've got some lubricating drops here, they're preserved and yeah, using it more than four times a day could potentially cause more irritation. People who are allergic to that specific type of uh, preservative are going to have a stronger reaction. I myself am actually very allergic to BAK. Um, <laughs> uh, so that, that's a good question. Otherwise, the non-preserved drops, pretty much when you go to a LASIK surgery center and you're going to have LASIK, the surgeons will give you a non-preserved artificial tear. Uh, oftentimes what we use is the Refresh Optive Advanced. Uh, that's one of the drops that I like a lot for non-preserved artificial tears because it addresses all layers of the tear film. And uh, it, it is approved for kind of post-LASIK care. Uh, so, um, so Theratears is also another good brand of artificial tears. Theratears is a good one. Uh, there are uh, some new bottles out there for non-preserved tears that have that aren't just in those little individual vials. I, I don't have any sitting around me, but a they're, they're in a larger bottle, but they have kind of a new patent on it where basically it squeezes and it kind of has a vacuum effect where it separates into another chamber. So that way it, it is a preserved, non-preserved drop, but it's in a bigger bottle. You can certainly look into those. I, um, I, I haven't noticed any real complications. I mean, that's what they're marketed for. So yeah, certainly you can look into that. Uh, uh, good question. Uh, we have, can I expect better or similar results with LASIK as I as I get with contacts. Um, in general, LASIK is not going to enhance or make your vision better than it has been with glasses and contacts. LASIK can get you seeing almost just as well, but sometimes a little bit better, but it's not going to be promised. So the as an example if you have amblyopia or what's the layman's term for lazy eye meaning it's not that your eyes problem seeing it's actually your brain's ability to process vision out of that eye you can do lasik 30 times on that eye but because it's not the eye seeing better it's the brain not being able to comprehend vision then again it's 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 going to get you as good as you could get with glasses and contacts but it cannot guarantee you're going to see better it's not going to enhance your vision and make you see like supervision so that, that's a really good question, though. Um, so, yeah, I think what we're going to do, I think we're going to kind of end that for questions. If you have more questions, go ahead and comment in the section below. I love reading questions from all of my viewers. Uh, I try to get back to them as much as I can. You know, life gets busy, of course, but I try to make an extra effort every night to sit down and try to respond to as many as I can. So I do appreciate your comments. Uh, of course, you can uh, go back to the Facebook page. You can go on Instagram, check out things on there, comment, like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Joseph Allen. Thank you guys so much for joining me here this evening. Uh, you know, again, if you have anything else education wise, questions about the eyes, vision or vision products, love to hopefully make a video for you guys. Uh, if you haven't, if we haven't made it already, 
Uh, again, if you're new to the channel, please, you can check me out on Twitter, Instagram, of course, here on, on, on YouTube, and then subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me here this evening. Uh, I really appreciate it. This is my first live stream. I thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, again, go ahead and comment in the section below. Let's do just a question of the day for you guys. Uh, again, kind of already asked it already, but our question of the day is, how do you feel about LASIK now? Was it kind of better pro? Do you feel like you're more thinking about LASIK? Or are you thinking about, uh, are you thinking about doing more, maybe not LASIK? Did this video help kind of answer some of your questions? Go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, again, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, again, otherwise, I hope you guys have a great night. Again, thank you. And uh, otherwise, we're going to just kind of kind of land the plane here. We're going to go over, uh, just going to kind of say good night. We'll talk to you guys later. Otherwise, if you'd like to catch other cool videos from Dr. Eye Health, you can check out another cool video over here to the side, or I'll have other cool videos down over here. Thank you guys so much. Keep an eye on it, and we'll talk to you soon.